So for the very first time in my history of owning any Sony Alpha mirrorless camera, I am right now filming 24 frames per second 4K video in my Sony a7R5, but I am not doing this using a 1 over 50th shutter speed, rather I am doing this using the proper 180 degree shutter rule, and using a shutter speed therefore of 1 over 48. But the fact that we could never do this before in Sony cameras, and even how we got here in the a7R5 is a little bit weird, so let's talk about it. So simply put, Sony cameras since the a7 IV have introduced a feature known as variable shutter. Now I actually have a short on this channel that kind of goes over how this feature works in the a7 IV and it is largely the same in the a7R5. Essentially whether you're dealing with something like a cheap flickering light or an LED display or anything that is prone to maybe encounter some type of flicker, this will allow you to dial in a very specific shutter speed all the way down to the decimal point that should enable you to avoid that type of flicker you're experiencing. And really this has come to be a very useful feature in the a7 IV and I figured this would be just as useful in the a7R5 as well. So yes in most cases when I've been shooting video in my Sony mirrorless cameras, I've been using a shutter speed of 1 over 50, and this is a fine amount of motion blur, though it is not the technical 180 degree shutter rule, because if we were to truly double 24 frames a second, that would be motion blur of 1 over 48. Now how much of a difference is there actually between 1 over 48 versus 1 over 50? There are certain motion interpolation folks that might have a different opinion on this, but I would say it's likely negligible. Now when you engage variable shutter in the a7 IV, it's going to allow you to pick a value as high as 1 over 8000 plus. In fact, it does this in sort of some odd numeric increments rather than round numbers like you would get traditionally with shutter speed. But in terms of how low you can go, you can only go as low as 1 over 50. And arguably this makes sense because again, if 24 frames per second is the lowest frame rate you can shoot in the camera for video, and 1 over 50 was the classic shutter speed rule that allowed you to get as close to 180 degree shutter as you could, then why would it need to go any lower? But when you engage variable shutter in the a7R5, you might be able to tell this operates just a little bit differently. Because while that same upper limit of 1 over 8000 plus still exists and very much looks the same, it now has a lower limit of 1 over 48. In fact, in the a7 IV, if you have a shutter speed that's below 1 over 50 and turn on variable shutter, it will automatically bump it up to 1 over 50. Pick a value lower than 1 over 50 in the a7 R5 and it will bump you to that lower limit of 1 over 48. Now again, is there a huge difference in those extra two units of shutter speed that you're shaving off between the motion blur you might be able to get? I'm not really sure. But then you also have to wonder why Sony would even bother changing this going from the a7 IV now to the a7 R5. And as far as I know, I think the Sony FX30 might also go as low as 1 48 in terms of engaging variable shutter. In fact, if any FX30 owners are out there, definitely drop a comment below and let me know if that is the case. So maybe a few questions here. Number one, why did Sony actually bother changing this to allow you to get even closer to that proper 180 degree shutter rule? Was this a weird nuance that people actually complained about and asked for, or is this Sony just sort of perfecting this feature a little bit over time? Or maybe to the point of a second question, is Sony actually considering at some point in the future allowing for actual shutter angles in their mirrorless cameras? And I can't imagine it would be that difficult to do. But if they've now actually perfected some of the tech that might allow that sort of shutter angle or specific shutter speed to exist, we might be one step closer to this than we were before. And then that might lead us to the third question, of course, or maybe point, which is, Sony, why haven't you updated your firmware and your other cameras? I know this might seem like a really minute thing for, say, the a7 IV to get that 1 over 48 shutter speed, but there are so many cameras in Sony's lineup like the a7S III, FX3, A1 that are still premium, new newer options in the Sony system that are lacking many of the features that cameras like the a7 IV and FX30, which are a fraction of the cost of those, now contain. Finding little changes or hacks like this in newer Sony models is always kind of a fun thing when you get a new camera, but I really just wish these things were not saved only for the latest and greatest. But I'll get off my soapbox. So that is now one trick you can do in your Sony a7 R5 to get a little bit closer to a proper 180 degree shutter rule when you're filming video. Hopefully this video has been of some help to you. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if it has. A lot more to come in terms of the a7R5 in the coming weeks as I dig into this camera more, so definitely subscribe for more content around that. For now, that is all I have to say, so thanks for watching.